wonderful privilege to be found in the house of God on this blessed Sabbath morn. I myself am very grateful to be here because I've been battling something over the last nearly two to three weeks. I don't know why it wouldn't leave me, but God is good. And because he is good, I am here. And because he is good, you are here. So I want to welcome you into the house of God today. I want to welcome the members of the band who I see to my right. I trust that as we worship together today, that God will indeed be part of our service and that we will be certainly led by him. And that when we leave here today, we would have been so glad that we decided to be here at Hillaby. So welcome one, welcome all. And may our fellowship today be sweet as we sit at Jesus' feet. Our opening hymn is number 142. Number 142. Everybody to stand as you worship God this morning. Because we have heard on high, singing, singing on the plain, and the mountains in reply, and the wind and joy.
scripture reading is taken from Matthew chapter 2, verse 1 to 12. Matthew 2, 1 to 12. And we will read it alternately. Following Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, Behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. <clears throat> and they said unto him, In Jerusalem of Judea, for thus is written by the prophet. And though Bethlehem in the land of Judah art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child, and when you have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed, and, lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh and together and being warned of god in a dream that they should not return to herald they departed into their own country another way may the lord add his blessing to the reading of his word Amen. let's all reverently bow our heads for prayer almighty and eternal father we come to you this morning Thank you for your many blessings and your mercies and your goodness that you continue to extend to each and every one of us. Father, you have been so good to us. You have sent your only begotten Son, Lord, left the glories of heaven. He who knew no sin came to this sin-cursed earth, took our sin, Lord, so that we may be able to experience what it is to live in a world without sin. And Lord, we open ourselves to you this morning. We ask for forgiveness. We ask for washing. We ask for cleansing. We ask, Lord, for the infilling of your Holy Spirit into each and every heart today so that he may teach us how to live, how to react, how to respond. Give us a spirit of discernment so that what comes from our mouth, how we live with each other, Lord, that you will be in the midst and that you will lead and guide our lives. Father, we want to thank you for how you've been with us this week. Some of us might have had a little cold, we might have some struggles, we might not have been able to get what we wanted done, but through it all you have been a good and great God to each and every one of us, how do I know that, Lord? Because we are all here this morning to give you a note of thanks and praise. And so, Lord, as we come to you this morning, we ask that you, we will open ourselves to accept the blessings that you have prepared for us. Be with each and everything that goes on here today. Help, Lord, that you would be in the midst. And whatever is said and done, Lord, that it would be a means of drawing us closer to each other and closer to you. 
Larry want to remember Sabbath schools all over the world. Some cannot worship in circumstances like we are today without any person running us and we having to run and hide. Some people do not have buildings to worship in, but Lord, they are so joyful and thankful because you, they can call upon your name and they have that faith and trust to know that you are in the midst. So Lord, we really look forward to the time when there shall be no more sin, nor sadness, nor death. We want to remember those who have been mourning, Lord. We want to remember Sister Jimma, who's here with us, that you will continue to strengthen her, Lord, and help her, Lord, that she will continue to hold to your unchanging hand. We also want to remember the Ford family, Grace and Brian and Anton. We ask, Lord, that you will continue to strengthen them, Father, and help that they will hold to you who to know is life eternal. So bless us all today, Lord. Keep us faithful and keep us true, Father, so that when you shall appear in your kingdom, that we, along with all those who we might have come into contact with, would get that opportunity, Father, to live and to reign with you in the earth made new. We thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering every prayer. In Christ's name, amen. For our Sabbath school feature this morning, <clears throat> I want to talk a little bit about the wise men. We know that gifts are an important part of Christmas. They demonstrate how we love and care and value others. In part, the tradition of giving Christmas gifts goes back to the wise men. In the Christmas story, they are best known for the gifts that they brought to the baby Jesus as they recognized who he was and why his birth mattered. So the wise men sought Jesus. Matthew chapter 2, 1 to 2 in our scripture reading, it said that Jesus was born in Bethlehem during the reign of King Herod. And about that time, wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem, asking, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to follow him. The wise men were like scholars <clears throat> of high position. Their study of the stars had convinced them that a child would be born who would be king of the Jews. They didn't know everything about Jesus, but they understood enough to leave their homes and travel a great distance, a great effort to find this child. And God made sure that they knew how to find what they were seeking. Does Jesus have at least this minimal place in your life that you're willing to seek him out? The question of who Jesus is deserves much, some effort. The search is worth it. God wouldn't leave you in the dark if you are genuinely trying to find him. The wise men worshiped Jesus. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother Mary and they bowed down and worshiped him. The wise men gave gifts to Jesus. Then they opened their treasure chest and they gave him gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. Gifts communicate how much a person matters to us. To give sacrificially takes us beyond mere lip service to express an allegiance that costs us something. Of course, just, Jesus doesn't need anything from us. But as the king, we can give him our obedience and our service. The wise men gave themselves to Jesus. God gave Jesus to the world. And when the wise men recognized the significance of their birth, they traveled far and they put their lives on the line in recognition of who he was. They gave him costly gifts, but beyond that, they took a major risk. They gave their time and their effort. They invested more than their words and even more than their treasures they gave themselves. God's gift to you is Jesus. 
His birth shows how much God values you. What is your gift in response to him? He deserves your loyalty, your obedience, your worship. He deserves your life. <coughs> the story of the wise men has several significant reasons. It symbolizes faith and revelation. The story of the wise men is a remarkable example of faith and revelation. They were not Jews, but they learned about the prophecy of a Messiah who would be born in Israel. They saw a new star in the sky and understood it as a sign that God from God that the Messiah had come. So they decided to follow the star. And even though they did not know where it would lead them, these men embarked on a long and perilous journey, crossing deserts and mountains and facing dangers and difficulties. But they did not give up. They persevered in their class. Their journey was rewarded when they finally arrived in Bethlehem, where they found the Christ child with his mother. Eventually, they had a personal encounter with the savior of the world, who had come for all people, not only for Jews. They experienced the joy and peace that only God can give. The wise man's journey teaches us many lessons about faith and revelation. It shows us that God reveals himself to those who seek him with sincerity, with determination, and with openness. It shows us that faith requires trust and obedience even when we do not understand everything or see the outcome. It shows us that faith is a journey, not a destination, and that we must follow God's guidance. It further shows us that faith is rewarded by God's presence and his grace in our lives. Even though the wise men did not know much about the newborn king, they believed that he was the one sent by God to save his people. When they finally arrived in Bethlehem, they were overjoyed to see the child with his mother, and they knelt and they worshipped him, showing reverence and respect and even presented him with gifts. We can learn from the example of the wise men. We can also worship and sacrifice for Jesus, who is worthy of all our praise and our devotion. We can offer him our gifts and our talents and use them for his glory. We can surrender our lives to him and trust him with our future. We can worship and sacrifice because he first loved us and gave himself for us. King Herod secretly sent the wise men to Bethlehem, telling them to report back to him when they found a child so that he could also worship them. But we know that Herod had evil intentions. He wanted to kill the child who threatened his throne. And despite the king's request, the wise men did not return to Herod but they departed to their own country in another way after being warned by God in a dream. The wise men's visit is a sign of God's universal love and salvation. It demonstrates that Jesus came for people of all nations, all tribes, and all languages. They recognized Jesus as the genuine king and they worship and pray to him. The wise men's visit represents the fulfillment of ancient prophecies that foretold how God would reveal his salvation to all nations through his chosen people. The prophet Isaiah, who lived hundreds of years before Christ, spoke of a time when the glory of the Lord will rise upon Israel and shine forth to the world. He said in Isaiah 60:30. Nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. The arrival of the wise men confirms that God's plan was being fulfilled in Jesus, who is the light of the world. They brought him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh.
which signify his royalty and deity and humanity. They acknowledge him as the Messiah, the Son of God, and the Son and Savior of the world. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. As the Christmas season comes and goes this year, may hope be found in the truth of God's word and the knowledge of his unchanging love for us every day of the year. Let us continue our worship with hymn number 121, Go Tell It on the Mount Peak. Go tell it on the mountains, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. The shepherds kept them watching, oh, silent lost by night. We hold true how the heaven they show the holy land. She called down and on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Oh, down and on the mountain that Jesus Christ is. Lesson study for today. I hope there was enough money around to do all the preparations. <laughs> yeah. Um, I saw a discourse from one of my schoolmates this morning um, encouraging people not to be caught up with the season. 
and not to look to get what they can't have. And um, it was, to me, a great discourse because at this time of the year, the world goes to all lengths to ensure that all these things are in place. And um, it is everything about food and drink and gifts and, every, and everything else that you can imagine and very little bit, and very little about Christ. Anyway, we have, we have a, we are of a different um, dispensation, and we see it differently. But, like the servant of the Lord said, this is too important a season of the year to just neglect it. So where we can, let's do our best to tell people about Jesus Christ and the significance of Jesus coming and what it really means for us when he comes again. So between those two dots from Jesus' birth and death and his next coming, we have a mission to perform. And this Squatter's Lesson Study has been very much about that. And, um, okay, I got a little reset here from Jess, so I'm just trying to reset again. This week's lesson study was about Esther and Mordecai in the main. We all know the story of Esther and Mordecai. And we know that there were two Jews who were exiled um, during the, the capture of the, the Jews by Nebuchadnezzar. And it is said to us this week that where we are, wherever we are, and in whatever circumstances we find ourselves in, there is room and opportunity to witness for Jesus Christ and to portray our faith in Jesus. We can only witness when it's comfortable. We can only witness when the situation and circumstances are easy. However difficult it is, we need to, vi to witness for, for Jesus. So before we go into our lesson study this morning, I would uh, invite Abby to go to the mic and um, offer a word of prayer for us as we proceed before our lesson study. Push up Abby's mic. Or maybe it's not on. Turn it on for her. Fellowship, one with another. We thank you for everything that you would have blessed us with during this week, Lord, and as we go into your lesson study, Lord, we invite your presence that you will direct us, Lord, and whatever we have to share and hear, let it be a mean of blessing, Father, and draw us closer to you. Bless the person that will be presenting the lesson service, Father, and pray and ask everything will go according to your will and plan for us. So bless us once again, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Our memory text, taken from Isaiah chapter 49 and verse 6, is very instructive to us. And it says, I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. You know, last week we were um, studying about reaching those people um, in places, the unreachable pe people, um, so to speak. But it, it, what is being conveyed here is that God is using us. He will make us that light to the nations. But instead of thinking about having to go to some foreign land, some heathen land, we have to think about those people in our circle. You see, when we do what we are supposed to do in our circle, then our circle gets wider. 
Because when you impact people, people in turn impact other people. And those other people impact other people. So in reality, when we witness in our little corner, we don't really know how far it can go. But God is the person, God is the one, not person, God is the one who wants the world to be saved. He is just using us. We are just his mouthpieces in some places, his example in others. For others to know about his saving grace, his love, and his mercy towards all of us. And it is his endeavor that no one should be lost and everyone should be saved. So I always say this. You know that when we come upon something, and there are several things we come upon in our daily lives. Um, maybe when we encounter a product that has um, benefits for us, we tell our friends about it. We, we, we show it off. And in turn, they get interested and they may want to make a purchase or to experience it as well. And if we were to tell people about what God has done for us in our little circle, then indeed they will want to know about this benefit that we get or we have and we want to come to, to, to experience it as well. And as the memory text says, when we are in this zone, the Lord says, I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. So that is a commission in itself for us so that we should know and appreciate what God wants for us. Now getting um, into the heart of the matter, in relation to Esther and Mordecai, we know, as I said before, we know this, the, the story of Esther and Mordecai. They were exiled, um, and they were in Persia at this time, in Susa. And by God's providence, they had assumed some positions of, I should say, priority, especially in the case of, of Mordecai. And we might not think that where we are may be significant. But where we are, we are not there ever by chance or mistake or happenstance. God always places us in a position where we can do something significant for him. Really, really, really significant. And, you know, oftentimes we may not think that we are worthy Oftentimes, we may not think that we have all the tools, all the attributes to do what God wants us to do. But when we study, read our Bibles, and we study the characters that are presented there for us, a lot of them too were people who were um, lowly, people who were not the most intelligent or whatever, but yet God used them. And in the same way, God wants to use us just like he used Esther and Mordecai and the lesson study would have gone into um, the situation with Daniel and his cohorts also who were um, exiled to Babylon. So we must adopt this attitude that wherever we are, we can do something significant. And this one now, this lesson, this speak, speaks to um, people of one culture being immersed into another culture and being asked to maintain their faith. It is easy to go with the crowd. It is easy to do what is easy. But that is not always pleasing in the sight of God because God is placing us in um, a workspace, a school space, whatever the environment is, to make a difference to the people who are there who do not know him. So although when you think about it, it was harsh for these people to be displaced from, from the land that they were living in, and we are told in our lesson study that Israel, um, living in Israel at that time and 
keeping the faith was relatively easy because all the laws of the land were um, in conjunction with what every, whatever was going on, on in their lives on a daily basis. They had no problems with um, Sabbath keeping because that was enshrined in the law as well. So it was relatively easy. But now going to a foreign land where um, there are pagan people, where there are um, different customs, how do you maintain your stance? How do you keep your faith when challenged by things around you that are easier, but as, um, at the same time when um, persecution also could come to cause you to relinquish your faith if you are not strong enough. But as I said, we have two characters here who stuck to their, to their guns. Um, the, and, and in fact, let me, let me uh, reiterate this one, um, state this one. Now, in, in Mordecai and Esther's instance, um, the captivity will have been over and people were, had repatriated back to Israel. But these remain. These remain. And for whatever reason, they remain. And when I thought of this, I thought of us as African descendants who came here through slavery. Um, slavery, colonization, neocolonization. And um, would anyone here readily want to go back to Africa to live? I don't even get a nod, so that means that, no, we are entrained in this culture. This is our place, so we don't want to go back there. So we can um, sympathize with, with Mordecai and Esther for wanting to remain where they were. But God did not put them to be just there. He put them there for a particular purpose. And that particular purpose was for people to get to know him and that they will see miraculous things being done through him because these people decided to stand up for their faith and the power of God could be seen and proven there. So there are some questions that come to view. How do we react when we find ourselves in a foreign situation, may not even be in a foreign land, and our faith is challenged? What do we do? What should we do in order to maintain our faith and to say to others, my stance is I believe in the true and living God, and if I have to die, I will die in order to maintain what I know to be true and right. How do we stand up and, and um, show to other people that we are truly grounded in God? And that's a question that I am throwing out to the audience. How do we stand up for our faith in, in foreign situations? everybody mm -hmm. may attempt to, to respond to that I think first of all we have to start with a relationship that we have with God mm -hmm. that, because that is the basis on which we operate that's the basis on which guides us as we do what we have to do mm -hmm. because you notice that and I keep making the point that with Daniel when he was carried away he was not the only one carried away but there were other people other Jewish potential leaders mm -hmm. people qualities Etc. Etc. Who were carried away, but notice that when we come down to it, it was just those four people who stood, and I, I think it draws attention to the fact that it has to be. A, it needs to be a foundation. We need to have a relationship where we test God, where we put him, where we recognize that He's there for us, mm -hmm. and then that gives us the confidence to go forward. Mm -hmm. Of course, we recognize that we need to be guided by the Holy Spirit, 
Exactly. And in terms of taking a stand, something it does not even require us doing anything. Sometimes it just requires us living the way, living to what we believe. Yeah. You, don't have to, you don't have to say anything, but that life itself preaches a sermon. Mm -hmm. And that's where, that's where it comes back to these, these scriptures we had, that we are to be a light to the nations. Mm -hmm. Because the whole idea is that as long as you stand up for God, as long as you live the way that God wants you to live, that difference will be seen. And yeah. of course, that difference sometimes attracts opposition and mm -hmm. attention. It is then how we respond to that opposition and, and uh, attention that shows how we are. That's so true, Brother Joe. Again, Brother Joe, to the, to the rescue. Any other um, contributors in relation to how we stand up for our faith? As Joe said, there must be a foundation, and that foundation must be in our relationship with God. If we, can, if we don't have a relationship with God, there's nothing to stand for. We, we, are, we are just there. And there are lots of situations in which you can be pretentious. I mean... You, you, you can purport to be a great gospel worker. You could purport to be a whole lot of things. But when that faith is tested, then when the rubber hits the road, the, the tr your true character always comes out. Come in, Brother Vincent. Um, good morning to everyone. I know practical, um, practical experiences always tell a story, and a much better story. Um, Stand up for your faith, take some courage. Mm -hmm. And you must have the courage to know that your God will deliver you. Now, this is going back a little while. <clears throat> I was working in an establishment, and I was the only seventh day Adventist there in that, in that, in that establishment. Um, <clears throat> they had a a man who came in to do some work. I don't know exactly why he came. He came to do something anyhow. But he was on the management thing. And he said to my boss, if he was going to choose somebody, he would not choose me to be a supervisor. Mm -hmm. he, if he, had, he would choose somebody else. No. <clears throat> I came up through the ranks. I, I had done a lot of years in the company, and I think. But lo and behold, he came in there because um, he came out some questions to me. But I was never the type of person who liked to go in people's office. Mm -hmm. I don't like going in the office and say, no, I'm talking to them. That me. So he wanted somebody to do like that. Mm -hmm. But I was not that sort of fella. Anyhow, he made a statement to the boss that I had said, that I didn't cooperate with him and whatever. And when, I, uh, when it was in a, a meeting, management meeting, and when I, he got up when I, and he was talking and he was saying what he had to say and all, and when he said that I did not cooperate with him, I looked at him, I got up immediately, and I accosted him. Have I ever did anything so to you, Mr. Grail? And he did not say a word. He could not say a word. And the boss told him to answer the question. He stopped there mumbling. He did not answer. Then one of the other, my, my said, man, answer the man. <laughs> you know, the man could not answer because I looked at him and I said to him, number seven, number seven, the truth needs no defense. Ever does. You come here and you found me here. And you're going to leave here, and you're going to leave me here. <clears throat> because I believe that my God was delivering me, because I, I set up for what is right. And I told him this way, the constitution of this country affords me the right of association. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and before, Brother Ford come, but before you come, I, I remember when he first joined the church, that 
I had a job offer and it entailed working on, on Sabbath. And the, ma the major plank of the um, business was um, on Saturday. And I told them that I could not come. And I'm talking about being in church for the first, probably within the first month or, or two. And I, I declined and I walked away. And I even forgot about it. And then about two weeks after, I got a call from the same people who told me to come. Forget about the Sabbath situation, come. And that, that I don't know if I had faith there or not. I was just following what I was told I was supposed to do. And like Joe said, sometimes it's all going to be it all got to be no big thing that you do because God is always standing by and God is always working behind the scenes for you. And, um, and that was an example to other people. Um, and, and no, I didn't even think about this. Subsequently in that job, we had some of the Adventists too. Although we, there are, um, should I, I don't want to use this statement, maybe strong, but we have some Seventh-day Adventist conjurers as well who will be in a job and fight hard not to work on Sabbath but don't go to church. In fact, the same Sabbath that they are fighting not to come to work, they are going elsewhere. And I was in a position to help those who wanted to observe their Sabbath to also observe their Sabbath. And that's because I stood up for mine before I even went to the job. So... There are lots of ways that, that that can happen. Yes, Brother Ford. Yeah, I, I think this is a good time for us to examine ourselves, seriously examine ourselves, uh, to determine the kind of relationship we have with Jesus. Do we have a deep abiding trust and faith and confidence in Christ? Or is it a matter just superficial? If it is superficial, then we would have the kind of problems that we talk about. Um, when we study the life of Esther and Mordecai and uh, Joseph and these guys, these guys, or these individuals, had a meaningful, deep, abiding relationship with Christ. So when difficulties come their way, when they, they, they had to make a choice, it really wasn't difficult enough because of their trust in God. Jesus once said, if you lose your life for my sake, you're going to find it. Because Christ has no other choice but to grant us life because of our faithfulness and our commitment to him. So when we leave the comfort of our homes, uh, of our island, where we worship in peace, and, you know, and we go to places where we find it difficult, we are persecuted, we have to make real hard choices and decisions. It boils down to our commitment and our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. If we have a strong, abiding faith in him, then those decisions are not going to be that difficult. Thank you. You, you want to say something, Brother Cesar? Good morning, everybody. Happy Sabbath. I want to make a link between yeah, come closer. observing the Sabbath mm -hmm. and the question that you raised. Is. We cannot refuse to practice something on a daily basis and then expect that when we get somewhere else in a situation, we're going to do it. In other words, our lifestyle must determine how we relate elsewhere. Now, the Sabbath. Observe how we have we like, do whatever we like, cut corners. Then when the real test comes, we cut corners 
And so they wonder why it's seven, seven individuals who were apparently Sabbath keepers here. As soon as they cross the ocean, when they get on a boat, that's it. That's it. It goes back to what Brother Joe was saying, a relationship with God. Relationship doesn't change if you go from here or we touch the sea or again the sky. It continues and it's grow. Mm. And sometimes, okay, you don't have to say a word. People observe you, how mm. you relate. Now, if, I, if I'm called by Christ's name, Sam Samuel Venice, I'm a Christian, and I go to work, continue late, cut corners here, do what others are doing. Um, mm. If there's excess stuff in the business place, carry home with me. You know, do things that the others are doing. Then you are not witnessing for Christ. The others are not seeing the difference with you. Something you don't have to say a word, but by your lifestyle, people can say there's a difference in your lifestyle. So the question you ask about in a foreign land mm -hmm. is a place to whom Jesus says, Judea, Samaria, other parts of the world. Mm -hmm. So our relationship, what we practice, what we observe. And one other thing before then, mm -hmm. when I was a, a little fella, and I heard some of Christ coming, and the signs of his coming, you know what I told myself? You are young, you have lots of time, and when you see these things happen, then get serious and think, <laughs> no, no. I was just, mm. I had to learn some hard lessons. It doesn't work so. Give them relationship with God from early. God in your youth, it takes you through. And as I told somebody this week, I pray to God every day and ask them to keep me in my right mind. Why? Because mm. I want my position to praise him all the time. And secondly, if we do not have God's words in our hearts and knowledge of God, when things happen to us, let's say for example, senility comes in, when you're in a control, what mm -hmm. are you going to be saying? The things that are stored here. So I want us to realize that we concrete our, ourselves in how we react by our relationship with God and do it now. Don't put it off. Yeah, so um, the author said to us, um, coming to the end of the Sunday, for those who are determined to be fearful, even the most unfavorable environment cannot keep them from obedience. And that is something that you need to um, allow to resonate with you. If you, are, if you are determined to be fearful, there's nothing that will push you back. I'm not saying that we will be perfect, perfect, because we also have the examples of biblical characters who stumbled and who fell. But if you have the right foundation and you fall, I can guarantee that you will get back up. All of us have gone through situations and circumstances where we did not exercise our faith to the fullest. And for those who can attest to standing up for their faith truthfully, you don't want the others who may have stumbled and fell to think that they are in the worst place. Because when things happen to you and you, and you overcome, that also gives you strength. My relative strength is not yours, may not be yours. I can't say it's not yours. And your relative strength may not be mine. But when I learn from you and you learn from me, our faith grows. And that is something that is also very important. Um, now, we, all of us, I mean, I, we can't associate with royalty and working in, in, um, in the courts of the kings and the queens. But we also either go to school or we go to work in foreign courts where we sit next to people who don't give one a yota about our faith, who are completely opposed to what we believe in, but we still have to exist in those environments and we need to stand up in those environments to let people know that there's a difference. I am associated with a lot of people who don't believe in God. A lot, not one or two, a lot, lot. Some of my good friends don't believe in God. But they are not going to shape me 
And in my perseverance, I see some of them coming over the line. I am in a, I am in a, a, a group chat that I started about four years ago with some of my schoolmates from 1967, when we entered school. And as I said, a lot of them don't believe in God, but some situations happened recently. And not only recently, I'll tell you this, in the last, in the last four weeks, about six of us died. In the last four weeks. And suddenly, somebody who was very um, dear to, to Brother Kyle up there, um, stated, we need to start a prayer group. And a prayer group has come out of that group. It isn't large, but it is growing. You understand? Because people are getting to understand. And it's only a, when you um, stick to your faith and let people know that these times have been predicted that we are in, and that Jesus is coming soon, and that there are consequences, we are not necessarily going to capture all but you can be rest assured that you're going to capture some. And that's, this, is, this is where we, we, we show people about our faith. I am in another group that I um, came into by happenstance about two years ago, a hiking group. And I don't, preach to, I don't preach to them. I just be as I am. And there is a lot of activity that they do on Friday nights. And I am told loud and clear, we know that you can be involved with this. We know that you can't come to this. <laughs> because they don't where I stand. And I'm not going to compromise and say, man, all right, I, can, I can come all these times. They already know that I am not coming and they prepare for me. So, you like, and again, as the memory text said, if we let the light of God shine upon us, it will reflect on other people and they will get to a knowledge and an understanding and that's an entering wedge where something can happen. In this same situation with Mordecai and Esther, we had a situation where um, the king was looking for a new bride because his old bride, was, old bride queen was disrespectful. And the person who shot out was Esther. But Esther was a Jew. Esther was not a Persian. And it so happened that through God's providence, Esther was placed in a position later to save her people. We have to stand up so that when the pressures come, we are also in a position to rescue our people as well. It may not be as dramatic as what happened with Esther um, saving all the Jews who were um, almost destined to be, to be killed, but we in our lives will always have situations whereby that we can come to the rescue of our own. Uncle Argo? Oh, yes, ma'am. If I could make a quick point. Uh -huh. um, and this kind of goes back to what we were discussing earlier, how you had asked, how do we... Um, show faith and persevering for God when we are tested, when our faith is tested. Mm -hmm. And I know as Adventists, we often focus on keeping the Sabbath and not going certain places and not doing certain things and not, you know, doing kind it, of these outward things. things that we do as good Adventists. Uh -huh. But I would like to present an alternate position. How do we have faith in God to change us and to change our hearts? How do we forbear and, to, and be persevering in situations where God has called us to love our enemies? When uh -huh. there is somebody who is constantly pressing at us. And, and how do we have faith in God to act like Jesus did? The, the Bible said the fruits of the Spirit, their love, joy, peace, gentleness, goodness. How do, Exactly. <laughs> so how do we... Um, in our everyday lives, and Brother Cummings said it perfectly, we can't not do it every day and decide that at this point in time we can wake up and do it. Mm -hmm. But I think that a deeper conversation outside of keeping the Sabbath, because if you've been keeping Sabbath for years, keeping Sabbath is easy. Mm -hmm. If you've been, you know, not wearing something or doing something for years, that doing that, exhibiting that physical thing is easy, but 
the difficult part comes with the insight, comes with the heart, comes mm -hmm. with changing our stony heart to a heart of flesh. And that is what Christ emphasizing. And I think that um, our faith now should be in, yeah, yes, to keep the Sabbath and yes, to do all those things, not taken away from that. Uh -huh. However, to, to allow God, yeah, have faith in God us. to change us. That's a, that's a fair presentation up and on. Um, the, the, that, that is true, you know. Not only um, having that faith in God to change us, but having that faith that God could change other people too. Because often we put a rubber stamp on people and we believe that th that is what they are and that is what they will ever be. But God can change stony hearts. And we, we have to believe that. And, and if, if we believe that, a lot of the rivalries and the, the other things that happen, even within church, because some people in church don't realize that when the, the, the things that you know that you should do and you don't do them is sin, you know. And very often, a lot of people who get up and propagate a lot of things don't realize the, the wrongs that they are doing. And these, are things, these are things that you have to, 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 to really meditate on and let God change you because it is not about me. You see, and a lot of people like pointing down there, not realizing when they point, so this one here pointing back at me. We got we to gotta get rid of those things in our lives so that we can let go and let God do what he wants to do in each and every one of us. God has gifted every single person in here. From the oldest to the youngest, gifted each one of us. And oftentimes we get in the position where we, where we try to stifle other people's gifts. And that's why the church is not doing as it's supposed to do because of that stifling and the rivalries that can come. So apart from looking at what we are supposed to do as examples to people, other places, let us also look inwardly. And where we know we are going wrong, make it right. Because if we don't make it right, when God comes, all the hallelujahs we shout in here, all the other things that we do, we going to be like those people who telling God that I cast out demons in your name, and I do this, and I do that, and I did the third, and God is going to tell them, be saying, I never knew you. I never knew you. So let's be like the Mordecai's, the Daniels, and the Esther's, and live a life worthy of the calling that God has placed on each and every one of us, so that when he comes, the difference would be that we would meet him as our Lord and Savior. And thank you. And let us, as we labor on, continue to build our relationship with God so that we will be able to stand up despite whatever challenges come our way. To close out our Sabbath school this morning, let's stand and sing the hymn number 229, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. Number 229. <clears throat> But everybody start of you now.
seed of his race. that we have spent so far in your presence. Father, it has been a heavenly sitting, and we pray that as we continue to worship today, that we will indeed get the blessing that you so want to give us. Continue to be with us as we go through this day. Send thy holy angels to be with us so that whatever is said and done here today may be done to thy name's honor and glory, we pray for Christ's sake. Amen. <clears throat> Our Sabbath school is now adjourned until next Sabbath. Good morning, church. Very pleasant Sabbath to all present and season's greetings to you. I'm here to give you your announcements. There are just a few reminders, basically, so I'll be gone very quickly. Remember I told you last week about next Sabbath, the 30th, being our homecoming. And we are asking that you invite your relatives, your friends, your community members, and those who used to worship with us who no longer do, we want to have a grand time worshiping next Sabbath. And uh, immediately following service, lunch will be served, compliments of Brother Half. So let's make this a grand occasion by inviting our relatives and our friends and those persons who used to worship with us before. Let us get them out in their numbers so that our pews, our chairs actually will be filled. 
the pastor has requested a meeting of the nominated committee, and he wants to do so this evening at 6 in the evening. During the week, we had some birthdays. On Wednesday, we had Sister June, who celebrated a very significant birthday because it's the penultimate birthday to a grand one, and I'm sure she had a really great time. And we on yesterday it was, on the 22nd, we had Brother Cecil, who celebrated a birthday. I'm sure that they are all thankful to God for allowing them another year. And I'm sure that they all had a good birthday. We want to remember that as birthdays come and as birthdays go, we need to be thankful because it is only God that allows us to see every morning when we wake. Our Wednesday night services continue this coming Wednesday night, 7.30 in the evening via our Zoom platform. And we are inviting and imploring as many of us as are possible to be part of that Wednesday night service. Um, those are all the announcements that I have for you today. May God continue to richly bless each and every one of us as we continue to work in his service. Brother Cecil has a very important announcement which she would like to bring to you at this time. Um, do re enjoy the remainder of your Sabbath day. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. You know it's not Brother Cecil. <laughs> but I, I stopped in on my way because today I'm doing the chatings with communion. And I stopped to, to let you know that Sister Calendar especially asked me to tell you how thankful she is for having been remembered by the church. And therefore, she sends her greetings. And from here, I go to Sister Lowe and uh, you will see me back before church is ended. But so that's why I stopped in and came to the podium because I didn't want for Sister Calendar's greeting not to reach you hot off the press. Good morning, everybody. Um, I, did, I did tell you that we would promise you a report on a community service and welfare work which we have done by God's grace throughout the year. I have Sister Keisha here with me who has done quite a bit of the leg work. And I just want to say, I, I'm gonna conclude when, when she's finished, but I just want her to give the church an idea of the cooperation that we've had over time with both our children's program and also our Christmas Hamper, and I'm going to conclude by saying a few words on how we sponsored. Good morning, church. I'm going to share with you briefly a list of the companies that have been working with us since February or March of this year. All right? It's actually 39 companies in all. I'm not going to go into all the details but I just want to share so that we have an idea who is supporting our initiatives, all right? Carter's Bakery, Nichols Bakery, Chickmunk Foods, Purity Bakeries, Atlantic Marketing, Continental Foods, Wabisco, Simplex Trading, Conf Confectionery Snacks, Good Time Snacks, High Park, Aunt May, Western Wholesale, Honeycomb Trading, Armstrong Agencies, Costulus, General Distributors, Country Boy Seasoning, Rose and La Flamme, Massey Distribution, Massey Stores, Hanshaw Innes, Price Mart, Supreme Distributors, Ocean Fisheries, Direct Packaging, Barbados Packaging Industries, Bryden Stokes, Jason Jones, Delish Products, Sundale Foods, Jordan Supermarket, Brydon's Express, Roberts Manufacturing, Barbados Flour Mills, Banks Holdings, SMJ Barbados, Shorelines, and Popular Supermarket. All right? That's a list of the 39 companies who have been helping us throughout the year. Some of them help us weekly, some of them help us monthly, some of them help us quarterly, and then we have the one-offs. What I would share with you now is 
a list of those who would have contributed specifically for the 2023 Christmas distribution. Just bear with me, I have to pull up another screen. All right, so Barbados Packaging Industries, they would have donated 25 boxes, 45 boxes, which were used um, to prepare the items for distribution. Good Time Snacks, they donated a bale of snacks for the children among the families. Continental Foods, now Continental Foods, they usually give us two huge slab of cheese monthly that we include in our breakfast packages for the families. For Christmas, they send four, four blocks of cheese. We have Simplex. This is another company that helps us every month. They donated four bales of toilet tissue for distribution. We have Chickmunk Foods. Now, Chickmunk Foods work with us monthly. They supply four, 720 eggs every month and chickens. So that's what they did for the Christmas period. Wabisco, this is another company who we work with monthly. They donate Eclipse, Sodabix, and Shirley's for the children. So they did that, but they doubled the, they doubled the items for the Christmas season. Delish Products, they sent us a case of seasoning. Shorelines was so good to us. We reached out to them for the first time, and they sent 43 packs of Marlin to distribute in the boxes. So praise be to God, right? Yeah. Armstrong agencies, they work with us very, very closely. They sent us Lasco powder milk, they sent us sanitary napkins, they sent us oats and sunshine cereals. From next month, they're gonna be working with us every two weeks to supply milk and cereals for the packages for the children in need. Ocean Fisheries, they sent us fries for the Christmas distribution. Western Wholesale, they have been working with us since February. Every month, they send us condensed milk and tuna, all right? Country Boy Seasoning, they help us once a quarter. They would have sent soy sauces, seasonings, morbi, and breadcrumbs to distribute last two weeks. Aunt May, they do morbi and jams. They would have helped us as well. Rose and La Flamme, syrups, and morbi. Honeycomb Trading, morbi. Massey Distribution, they work with us once a quarter. They would have contributed for Christmas a case of bad soaps, macaroni, evaporated milk, and sif. Massey stores, they always give us food vouchers for the children. Price Mart. Price Mart, they have been really, really, really good to us. Amen. They sent us 40 packs of flour, 80 packs of macaroni, 80 packs of peas, 320 rolls of toilet tissue, and 100 pounds of sugar. Amen. Right? Now, Massey also sent their team of five, or, I think it was six persons to assist us for those two days, the 12th and the 13th. And when they came, they came with extra stuff as well. Um, mm -hmm. High Park, they sent us breakfast protein, which we included. General distributors as well, they sent us some drink mix. So this is an idea of how the 21 companies would have worked with us for the Christmas distribution. Now, I just want to pause and, and recognize Carter's Bakery who have been helping us since February. They give us four packs of dinner roll and a cake every Friday so that we can, we can serve the children. Nichols Bakery, they also have been working with us since March of this year. They send two sang sandwich loaf and a cake mm -hmm. every Friday, every Friday so that we can feed the children. And Purity Bakeries, they started working with us recently to, set, to supply goodies for the children, and bread, which we include in these breakfast packages. So church, we have an idea who's helping us, where all this stuff is coming from. Praise be to God. Amen. And I, I, want, to, I want to thank you on behalf of the church for working so diligently and studiously. Sister Keisha is the one who's making the contacts, making the calls, and arranging for pickups. And I want to thank God for the effort and time she puts in at least two hours a day for community services, and I thank God so much for the support. Now, the church say amen. We thank you for your support in that, in making this possible. As we know, I have our children downstairs who are there in our feeding program, and also for our distribution. Thank you thank so you. much. I want to conclude by letting you know that, of course, we have some accountability, and as we 
arrange their packages and distribute. We send our pictures out to the companies. I just want to use some responses that we got from some companies. This one is from Massey, the vice president, assistant vice president. He says, wonderful. Thanks for sharing. He's responding to the pictures of the distribution. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing. This is just totally inspiring. That's the Massey vice president. From the Bisco, commercial manager, excellent work, excellent. From country boy season, nice. Pray God continue to bless you. I pray that he blesses you and that you will continue to be a blessing to others. I'm sure agencies, great work. Congratulations, great work. And we have one here from I'm from agencies. I'm glad everything came off well. Thank you and have a wonderful season. From Weston, good morning. This is fantastic. Great job. From Hypac, we are happy we can assist. Merry Christmas and all the best to to the church and the family. And this one comes from Joel Baker at Purity Bakeries. Good morning. Thank you for sharing. May God continue to bless your ministry. From Rose La Laflem, that's excellent. And from Good, Good Time Snacks, it's a pleasure to contribute to the worthy cause. We, ha we have lots of smiling faces for Christmas. All the best. This is the response we got as we sent out photos to our companies, our donors. And we want to thank God for his goodness and church. As I continue to say, this is a blessing from God. As we reach out to others, God reach out to us. And mind God, whom we serve, to satisfy all our needs. So you have nothing to fear for the future, except we forget how far, how we have came from in the past. So as we go forward, let's trust in God. Work well this day, because night cometh when no man can work. I want to thank you, church members, for your support throughout this year. I want to thank all our donors, our church members who donated stuff. I want to thank all for your contribution. And I say in conclusion, to God be the glory, great things he has done. Thank you so much for your patience and for listening and for this is a report that I promise you and may God bless us all today. Amen. Good morning everybody and a happy Sabbath teaching and every one of you. I hear you. Happy Sabbath. How is everybody doing? Everybody's good? Okay. As we begin our worship this morning, we're going to start with this beautiful song. It says, He is exalted. The King is exalted. This morning, as we exalt Him in our lives, I pray that you're blessed. Exalted, the 
forever exalted and I will praise His name. He is the Lord, forever His truth shall reign. Heaven and earth rejoice in His power. The King is exalted on high. He is the Lord. Sing, He is the Lord. Forever His truth shall reign. Heaven and earth rejoice in His holy name. He is exalted. Exalted, he is exalted. The king is exalted. He is exalted. The king is exalted on high. Oh, he is the Lord. Forever his truth shall reign. Heaven and earth rejoice in his heart. The King is exalted on high. Good morning, church. A very, very pleasant Sabbath to all assembled here. At this time, the church at Hillaby is called to worship. And Acts 4.12 says, There is no one else who has the power to save us. For there is only one name to whom God has given authority by which we must experience salvation. The name of Jesus. in your presence this morning, asking you for a very special blessing. Come close to us and let us feel your presence, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. 
The pleasure is mine to welcome you to this very special service we are having today. I know that what is prepared will be very enjoyable, inspirational, but most of all, something prepared to focus us on Jesus Christ. I can say as I look down this audience that I see many ladies who are resplendent. I, I see a host of colors, the colors of the rainbow, the colors of the forest, the colors of the sky, all parading before me right here and now. And I see some beautiful people who I've not seen in a while. Sister Bella, it's always good to have you Amen. and your family. Amen. Welcome especially. Welcome to Joe's family, the Alzheimer's sitting, sitting in. Um, but it is it's always good to see Binslow and um, Janice. Right. Um, there's um, my friend's grandmother there. Um, who else around the odd? There's some visitors at the back there as well. But welcome, we Sister Chrissy hiding behind Grantley back from Canada. I know, now we know why somebody was going to the airport. Yes, welcome back, Chrissy. Um, enjoy your shorts there. Um, oh, there is Shanta's mother. She, she didn't visit her really. Which, who, which one? <coughs> Excuse me. Yes, welcome to you too. Nice having you. Very beautiful, very resplendent. Love the colors. Then there is Michelle in a visitor. The, re the reindeer lady who I met and who I have on my phone already recorded. Yes, she promised to be here last week, but she is here this week. And I welcome you, Sister Michelle. You are in your rightful place. And to all of us who are uh, um, here on a regular basis who make this service, we want to thank the, the band for coming out and their supporting acts as well. Um, who, is gonna, who are going to make this a very special service for us today. I ask that we continue this Sabbath in this, in this high spirit as we look to, to God and as we look to Christ um, and to make this a real high day and a high calling. Welcome one, welcome all. Our opening hymn is number 136, number 136. Six. You want to please stand? Good Christian, now rejoice with hearts and soul and voice. Give ye to one we say, Jesus Christ was born today. Our sin has before him bow, and he is in the manger now. Christ was born today, Christ was born today. Good Christians now rejoice with hearts and soul and voice. Now ye hear in endless place, Jesus Christ was born for this. Ye and all will have his door, and we are blessed evermore. Christ was born for this, Christ was born for this. The Christians now rejoice with hearts and soul and voice. Now we hear not near the grave. Jesus Christ was born to save. Hold your love and call you home to gain his everlasting home. Christ was born to save. Christ was born to save. Jesus 
Jesus Christ was born to say, Christ was born to Christ was born to say, 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 Christ was born to say. Our scripture reading is from a very familiar passage of scripture, Isaiah, the book of Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6, and I would like for all of us to read it together since it's so significant to all of us. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And may God add his blessings to the reading of his word. As you pray our hearts for God's presence to come, we sing now. Now the Lord as we pray, take our hearts that mine far away from the dress of this world all around. To your throne with grace. To your throne and grace. May your lives, may your lives be transformed by your love. May your souls, may your souls be refreshed from above. As this night, as this moment, let people, let people everywhere join us now. That's what this altar is for. I would invite you to take a position of reverence as we approach the throne of grace. Eternal and everlasting Father, we pause to recognize your goodness, your faithfulness, your love, and tender mercy. We thank you for this wonderful Holy Sabbath day, dear Lord, that we can come into your presence, dear Lord, to give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. Thank you for being such a wonderful and faithful God. We thank you for Jesus, our friend, our redeemer, and our soon coming king. We thank you for that old rugged cross, dear Lord, where you shed that precious blood that we may have forgiveness for our sins. Thank you, dear Lord, that as we come, we can acknowledge you as the supreme God, a God who provides, a God who sustains, a God who leads. We ask you to be with us this day, dear Lord, as we celebrate your creative power. May we reflect on the goodness and how you protect us and provide for us the course of this week. You said that you will never leave us nor forsake us, but as we trust you, dear Lord, you will provide all our needs. We lift before you, dear Lord, those that are still mourning their loved ones. We pray that you'll continue to comfort them, dear Lord, in this time of bereavement. May they feel your presence 
May you feel your comfort, dear Lord, and your solace. We ask you to be those that are in need. We know that you are still the great provider, and you use our hands, our feet, our means to bless others. And may we be faithful in carrying out your business. We commit this service into your hand, dear Lord, and may whatever is said and done here we bring honor and glory to you. Be with the narrator, brother Joe. We pray that you will bless him and that you will use your words even in his mouth. So into your hand we commit our lives and this service, and to your name's honor and glory we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. time we will collect our tithe and free will offering and any other offering you want to give as the media team play this song. Larissa and Rosette are two best friends who live in Burundi, a beautiful country in eastern Africa. Larissa and her family are Adventists. One day, while the girls were playing together, Larissa's mother called her daughter home for family worship. Loretta invited Rosette to join them for family worship. Rosette had never heard about family worship, but was curious and decided to go. As it happens daily in all homes of those preparing for Jesus' coming, Larissa's family sang a song about Jesus. Then mother read a Bible story, and then they prayed together. Rosette loved it and asked if she could come again. Larissa happily agreed and even invited her to attend Sabbath school with her. On Sabbath, Rosette joined Larissa for Sabbath school and loved singing songs about Jesus and hearing Bible stories. That evening, Rosette told her parents about Larissa's Sabbath school. After a while, Rosette also invited her parents to attend the services with her. Although her father doesn't go, her mother comes when she doesn't have a class on Sabbath. Rosette wanted her family to pray together as Larissa's family does. Her mother allowed her to lead in family worship, and eventually, her mother also decided to join the church. Rosette is overjoyed and continues to pray for her father, hoping that he too will want to learn about Jesus. Sabbath school attendance and family worship not only provide Christian education for children, but also unite the whole family in seeking God first. Used wisely, both may even become a powerful missionary tool but there are additional ways to help children to exercise and strengthen their trust in God. By teaching them to establish the habit of worshiping God with their tithe and promise, for example, they learn to think in eternal realities. And if their little treasures are packed in heaven, their hearts will also be there and they will learn to trust God more. As we return our tithe and promise, may we put our desires last and God first. Amen. Let's stand for our prayer. Our loving God, we want to thank you once again for your goodness. We thank you for the tithe and the offering that we receive that we can truly return to you with a grateful heart. We ask your Lord that these means will go to further your cause, that the name of Jesus will be lifted up and many women, boys and girls will come to the knowledge of your truth and to accept you as Lord and Savior of their lives. So bless these funds, dear Lord, and bless us as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. At this time, we have our children's corner by video. God's story. Jesus is born. 
It's a part of God's stories about how he sent his son, Jesus, to be born. And it goes like this. Remember when God created a perfect garden? He also created a perfect family, Adam and Eve, to live in the garden with him forever. All they had to do was trust God. Then they would live with him forever in a perfect world where nothing bad happened, ever. Unfortunately, Adam and Eve stopped trusting God, so they disobeyed him. That's when all the wrong things in the world began. The worst part was they were separated from God because God is perfect and can't be around anything wrong. But God came up with a plan to rescue us from all the wrong things in the world. That way, he could be close to us again. For hundreds of years, God planned this rescue. He built a special family for the rescuer to be born into. He told prophets how to recognize the rescuer when he came. Prophets hear from God and then share it. God's family was so excited. And finally, it was time. God was ready to send his very own son, Jesus, to be with us on earth. Of course, he could have sent Jesus as a warrior or a superhero, but he didn't. He sent him the same way we all get here as a baby. Now, that might not sound strange at first, but to a young woman named Mary, it was a huge surprise. God actually sent an angel to tell her that she was going to have a baby named Jesus. Mary was terrified, but she said, I serve the Lord. May it happen to me just as you said it would. Basically, Mary wanted what God wanted. Anyway, the news about Mary's baby also came as a big surprise to a man named Joseph. Mary was going to be his wife, and now she was going to have a baby. But Joseph wasn't the father. So an angel came to him in a dream. He said, Don't be afraid to take Mary home to be your wife. She will give birth to a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. After hearing that, Joseph obeyed. A bit later, the king told people to go to their hometown to be counted. That was something that happened every once in a while. Joseph was from a little town called Bethlehem, so that's where he and Mary went. When they got there, Mary and Joseph couldn't find a place to stay. With nowhere else to go, they spent the night in a place where animals were kept. And that very night, Jesus was born. Mary laid him in a manger which is where animals eat. Here was the king of heaven, the perfect rescuer, born with animals and sleeping in a dirty feeding dish because nobody would make room for him. Kids, have you ever felt like nobody wanted you around? Well, that quiet, lonely moment was the moment God's whole family had been waiting for. So God did something special. He sent angels to some shepherds who were taking care of their sheep nearby. The angels said, Today, your Savior is born in the city of David. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. The shepherds went to find Jesus right away. They told others the news. The rescuer is here, and he is sleeping in a manger. Everybody who heard their story was amazed. This is what they had been waiting for. It just happened in a way that wasn't expected. Even though people had stopped trusting God, He loved them and us. He wants to be with us so much that He sent His very own Son to earth to live as a man. In fact, one of the names God called Jesus was Emmanuel, which means God with us. Through this tiny baby, God was close to His people again. And that's the story of when Jesus was born. But here's a quick version of what happened after Jesus was born. A star appeared in the sky. Magi followed it and worshiped Jesus. Jesus grew up. He never did anything wrong. He showed us what it looks like to follow God and love like God. Then he took the punishment for everything we've done wrong. Now we can all be close to God again. And that's a part of God's story. Good morning, saints of God. It's all in the name. It's all in the name. Let's pray. pray. The Heavenly Father, come with us. Take charge, we ask. In Jesus' name, amen. What's in the name of Pines, Juliet, and William Shakespeare's classic, Romeo and Juliet? 
That which we call a rose by any other name will smell just as sweet, she pontificates. Shakespeare uses this line to convey the view that the naming of things make little sense, that a name has no real value or significance. But today, we want to declare to all who will listen that Jesus Christ is not just a name. There is power in that name. There is victory in that name. There is salvation full and free in that name. And there is life everlasting in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Isaiah catches this spirit in Isaiah 9.5 when he provides an assemblage of synonyms to connote the might, majesty, and magnanimity of our Savior. There we read, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Wonderful because he is both God and man. His love is the wonder of the angels and the saints. The Messiah is truly wonderful in all things. It was wonderful love by which God gave him and by which he came to the earth through the wonder of his incarnation. His mighty, marvelous works were wonderful. His dying agonies were a wonderful demonstration of his love and, he, and what he was willing to endure for us. His resurrection and ascension are worthy to excite admiration and wonder because they declare his power over death and the grave. Joy to the world. So this first song we're going to sing for you, or are we going to sing together? I want to invite y'all to sign. Cause this is a little catchy, and we can have a little fun while we worship and we praise God. All right.
counselor. He knew the counsels of God from eternity. And so no one is more qualified to give us counsel and direct us in the path of righteousness. No one can teach like him because he is God. Welcome, all ye faithful. unsearchable wisdom of the future Messiah and how qualified he is to direct and guide humanity. We should not simply praise his wisdom as we praise that of our fellow men, but we should do so with adoration and amazement as we stand in awe of and wonderment at the wisdom of our Lord and Savior. Good Christians, now rejoice.
Sing now. When Christians now rejoice with hearts and soul and voice, gave we heed to what we say. Jesus Christ was born to say, Lord, He is in a man. You sing now. Christ was born to say, Christ was born to say. Good Christians now rejoice. Good Christians now rejoice with hearts and soul and voice. Now ye hear the endless bliss. Jesus Christ was born for this. He has opened heaven door, and we are blessed evermore. Christ was born for this. Christ was born for this. Good Christians now rejoice with hearts and soul and voice. Good Good Christians now rejoice with hearts and soul and voice. Now ye need not bear the grave. Jesus Christ was born to save. Call you on and call you all to gain his everlasting home. Christ was born to save. Christ was born to save. You sing now. Sing. Christ was born to save. 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 Amen. The mighty God. The name mighty God reveals to us who Jesus is and what he came to do. Mighty speaks to his power, authority, and ability to save us. Why God draws attention to the fact that he is a divine being, perfect in power, wisdom, and goodness, who is worthy of our worship as ruler and creator of the universe. The phrase mighty God reassures us that with Christ as our savior, we should not fear the forces of evil because our God is mighty and powerful. He recognizes our weakness and stands ready to supply his strength in our hour of greatest need. When we are lost, helpless, and despondent, he reaches out to us, takes our hands, and with tender love, guides us back to the path of righteousness where we will find hope, peace, and fulfillment. When we fall, he lifts us back up, reassures us, and reminds us of his deep concern and unfailing care. Truly, Jesus is our mighty God, who is always ready to save. Heart, the herald angels sing.
Christ by heart. Christ by heart, you step on Everlasting Father. Everlasting highlights the fact that he was there from the beginning and his reign will never end. Paul captures this point very well in 1 Timothy 1.17 where he declares in his charge to Timothy, Now unto the God eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Father conjures up the images of love, affection, concern and care as someone who will always be with us someone who looks out for us and is always very concerned about our best interests someone who sacrificed his life so that we can have life eternal this point is underscored in hymn 179 in our hymnals the wonders of redeeming love a Roswell Cottrell beat Perry Beach collaboration verses 1 3 and 5 read as follows the wonders of redeeming love, our highest thoughts exceed. The Son of God comes from above for a sinful man to bleed. And now before his Father's throne, his precious blood he pleads. For those who seek the throne of grace, his love still intercedes. His love will not be satisfied till he in glory shall see the faithful ones for whom he died from sin forever set free. Thou didst leave thy throne.
sing now oh come to my heart lord jesus there is room for my heart for thee sing for sin on heaven's heart heaven's heart is right when the angels stand proclaiming thy royal decree but of lowly has come to work and in grace is humility sing now oh God to my heart Lord Jesus there is room in my heart for thee the cross come rest and the birthday death in the shade Son of God in the desert of Galilee. Oh, come, oh, come to my heart, Lord Jesus. There is room in my heart for thee. Thou hast came, O oh Lord. Thou hast came, O oh Lord, with the living word that should say. directs our attention to his rulership, authority, power, and sovereignty. In a world wracked by feuds, disputes, skirmishes, and outright war, peace is a prized commodity. But Holy Writ makes it clear, this peace is not just peace on the earth made new, but also peace between us and God now. His role as our Redeemer and Savior is to reconnect us to God. W.D. Cornell and W.G. Cooper captured this well in their hymn, Wonderful Peace, number 466 in our hymnals. Listen to the lyrics of verses 2 and 3 and a short piece from the beginning of the refrain at the end of verse 3. What a treasure I have in this wonderful peace, buried deep in my inner soul, innermost soul, so secure that no power can mine it away while the years of eternity roll. I believe when I rise to that city of peace, where the altar of peace I shall see, that one strain of song which the redeemed will sing in that heavenly home will be peace, peace, wonderful peace. Truly, Jesus is the ultimate peacemaker. For unto us a child is born. Oh 
in the name. Isaiah and Isaiah 9-6 establishes the significance of a name by utilizing a collage of titles to depict our Savior as wise, powerful, a loving patriarch, and a peace provider. When the storms of life come our way, this is a verse we can cling to because it paints a picture of someone who will always look out for us, who always provides for our every need. We want to switch our attention to the New Testament and examine three other names, two from Matthew 1, and the other first cited in Revelation 1, 8. Jesus. In Matthew 1, 21, the angelic messenger makes a grand announcement to Joseph on instructions from God himself. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Why is the Son of God called Jesus? Because this name identifies him as God's servant to humanity. The one who alone can save people and bring them into eternal inheritance. Therefore, we ought not to seek nor try to find salvation in any other. Here is what one commentator said. Since God, who cannot lie, commanded from heaven that his son manifested in the flesh, be given the name of Jesus, that is Savior, I know for certain 
and have the assurance that he will fully and perfectly save me. Unquote. Out of all the names he could have chosen, God chose this name Jesus for a reason. Paul knew the reason. Wherefore, God also hath exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Philippians 2, 9 and 10. Peter also knew and declared it before a phalanx of religious officials. Be it known unto you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given unto men, whereby we must be saved. Acts 4, 10 and 12. Oh yes, there is saving grace in the name of Jesus. There's a song in the air. There's a sound in the air, there's a star in the sky. Emmanuel. In Matthew 1, 23, he is Emmanuel. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Built into this name is a special message of hope reminding us that Jesus is with us in every situation. Jesus is the long promised Emmanuel sent by God to save his people and usher in a new kingdom. Because of Jesus Emmanuel, we should never have to we never have to be alone. We never have to wonder how to please God or worry if our efforts are enough. We simply rest in him, knowing he is with us, loves us, and will never leave us. Emmanuel, God with us. Oh come, oh come, Emmanuel.
to now. Oh, come down. The path of knowledge, sure. Yes, the path of knowledge, sure. And cause us to hear her voice. Cause us in our ways. Let's join all of our voices to sing. Rejoice. Rejoice. Last verse together now. Come to I want to hear you sing, come on. Omega. In Revelation 1 8, Christ proclaimed himself Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. Alpha and Omega are the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet. Jesus bestowed this title on himself to indicate that he was at the beginning of all things and he will be there at the end. Paul bears down on this point in Hebrews 12 2 when he says, in part, looking unto Jesus the author and finisher of our faith, signifying that Jesus is the all in all of our salvation, from our justification to our sanctification, and finally our glorification. It is therefore no wonder that Jesus declares, and behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Revelation 22, 12 and 13. Oh yes, it's all in the name. There's life everlasting in the precious name of Jesus. Today, the greatest event in the annals of human history is before us. And very few Bible writers have captured this prophetic event with the appeal and evocation of Isaiah. We started with him and we will end with him. Listen to this. And he will swallow up death in victory. And the Lord God will wipe all tears from off all faces. And the rebuke of his people shall he take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken it. And it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him. And he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Revelation 20, sorry, Isaiah 25, 8 and 9. May this be our cry in Jesus' name. Our final song, You Are the Alpha and Omega. I want to invite everybody to stand with me. Stand with me as we worship God.
can take that from the top. One voice as we watch the You are Alpha. to make a special appeal on behalf of the musicians. They came this morning and their major concern would be how they will get out. How they will get back out. Alright? So if you, they're parked right by the road, 
So if you happen to be in front of them, make sure that as quickly as you can, you exit, move your vehicle so that you can take away their agitation. All right? Make them feel comfortable. So we're going to call them, record them, to yes. give the vote of thanks. And then immediately after that, we'll have a benediction. So everybody had a wonderful time in the presence of God? I certainly did have a wonderful time. Now, to pull, a pro, to pull off a program like this, it requires a lot of brilliant people and dedicated persons to the cause. So, after the last program that we had, I think it was a hymn of praise that we did last time, the elder said, for the month of December, we want a program. We want a musical program. And to be quite honest, he'd been asking me for a program for some years over, and I just, I kind of let him down. So... I was in a way grateful that I could at least be part to bring this to him. So first I want to acknowledge Kyle and the media department. Well, Andy first, yes, before we go there, I want to first acknowledge God first and most importantly. Because without him, we wouldn't be here today as we worship together, right? Okay. So Kyle is, uh, how can I use this? Kyle is one of the hardest working men in this church. You may not see it behind the scenes. There's a lot of stuff that needs to be hap that needs to happen. And when he came up, he said, Cardon, I need you to find a band. I want you to call some people around. And he gave me my task that he was, and he was working on who was going to write the script. And he called up Uncle Joe. And Uncle Joe said, Alright, no problem. Let me pray about it. Let me take my time. Let me put some things together. And what you witnessed today was from the hand of Uncle Joe. Amen. So we continue on with the media department. We want to thank Michaela behind there. All these beautiful graphics that you see is from Michaela. On the board, we have Corey working the sound system to ensure the vocals are on point. Sounding beautiful, right? And Kyle behind the scenes ensuring everything runs smoothly with the cameras for the stream. For those who are watching, we thank you for coming on and viewing with us today. Now we want to come over to the band. Now this band is a very special band. Not only because I sing with them, but you're in the presence of some of the greatest musicians that this island has to offer. The musical coordinator for today is Mr. Stefan Bascom. Playing so beautifully this one. And on bass we have the one and only Erin Lynn. And to the drums, my man, you can really play. Really play. This is Mr. Delano Eiffel. Everybody say hi to Delano. Amen. Now today, the praise, the praise team that you saw here, it was supposed to be made up of members from Project Praise, which we typically are part of. But a lot of members got sick and they were unable to have. But one of the members that was able to make it here is Brother Everon Walker. Always willing to assist, and he came out and he was like, Yeah, I'm gonna be here. And we thank you. Second, we want to thank Shannon, Shannon Farnham. We want to thank her for coming on board. Last minute, a little bit last minute, but we want to say thank you so much, Shannon. Now, on to Miss Shanta this morning. We had a soprano singer that was supposed to fill in. I was going to give Shanta a break this week because next week Shanta got to run things. So he was going to give her a break, but unfortunately, the soprano singer that was supposed to come on board to sing with us this morning was unable to make it. So we want to give Shanta a round of applause saying thank you for coming out here to really assist us this morning. Thank you so much, Shanta. And to every one of you, I want to say a special thanks to you for coming out. Because without you, this program would not have been what it is. So we thank you and we pray you have a blessed and beautiful remainder of your Sabbath. God bless everyone. Let's stand for the benediction, please. Little ones, could you please stand? Thank you. Good. All right. That's why it's... Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your goodness and your mercy. 
want to thank you for the blessings which, we have, which have been poured here today. We thank you, dear God, for the quality of what we have seen. We thank you for the spirit which prevailed the whole presentation. Thank you, dear God, for your blessings. Help the Heavenly Father, as we reflect on the importance of the birth of the Christ child, that we will see this special event as significant to our lives, and that it will be a means of drawing us closer and closer to you. Now be with us, the Heavenly Father, as we leave this place. Continue to direct us and continue to bless us during the course of this day. We give you all the glory and give you all the praise that is due to your name. And this we do in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.